All right, go ahead and pause the video here for a couple of minutes and try to answer this question. Okay, using the periodic table, classify each of the following elements as a metal or a nonmetal, and then further classify each as a main group element, a transition metal, or an inner transition metal. Okay, so let's bring up a copy of the periodic table here. Okay, first, cobalt. Here is cobalt, number 27. So cobalt is a metal. Remember, let's, let's add in the zigzag line here that shows us the difference between metals and nonmetals. It goes like this. So anything that's over here is a non-metal. Everything that's over here is a metal. And anything that's right on the line is a metalloid, a semi-metal. OK, so cobalt is a metal it's to the left of that line. And it is further a transition metal because it's in this pink, or I guess it's salmon colored, this kind of salmon colored middle region here from element 21 to 30, all of those columns. So this is a transition. Okay, let's find europium. Europium is right down here element 63. So um, if we look at the way the table works, let's look at these numbers. This row starts 37, 38, 39. This one goes 55, 56, 72. So the, all of those missing elements, 57 to 71, they're all down here. So when we count the table, we go 55, 56, and then we have to kind of snake down here and do this row next. 57, 58, 59, so on, up to 71. And then we kind of have to snake back up here and go 72, 73, 74, and so on. So this piece, this is called the, these are the lanthanides. The lanthanides, this section really belongs right here in the table. It belongs where it says 57 to 71 is where this is supposed to go. But if we did that, if we cut the table there and opened it up and put this section where it's supposed to go, then it would make the table really, really long. And so uh, the designers of the table decided to put to kind of cut it out, cut that section out, and put it down below just to save space so the table could uh, wouldn't have to be so long. Um, but the the lanthanides starting from fifty seven. They go, this is the first row goes in here, and then the actinides down here starting at 89, that row goes in here, 89 to 103. So europium is right here, it's a lanthanide. So these are metals, because of where they are, they're on the left side of that line. And this is a uh, lanthanide. So that's how we will characterize it, lanthanide. So in addition to being lanthanides or actinides, depending on if you're in the sixth row or the seventh row, these are also called inner transition metals. So lanthanides and actinides are both inner transition metals. So this would, uh, europium would also be classified as inner transition metal. All right, let's look at iodine. Here's iodine, number 53. Um, these uh, kind of turquoise colored elements, boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, astatine. These are generally considered um, metalloids. Sometimes polonium is considered a metalloid, sometimes not. Aluminum is never considered a metalloid. Aluminum is a metal. Um, so. Aluminum is, even though it touches this line, it's not a metalloid. 
that pretty much all the other elements that touch that line are considered metalloids. Um, and iodine is not on that line. Iodine is over here to green. So it's a non-metal. Notice on the periodic table, most elements are metals. There are not very many non-metals on the periodic table. According to this table here, the only non-metals on the periodic table are these green ones and the noble gases, which leaves us with uh, 16. 16 elements over here. Well, including hydrogen, that would be 17. So 17 elements that are non-metals, 111 elements that are metals. So most metals on the periodic table, excuse me, most elements on the periodic table are metals, and very few elements are non-metals. Iodine is one of the non-metals. It is main group. And further than being called main group, um, it's also called a halogen. That row, um, or excuse me, the column that iodine is found in, those are called the halogens. Indium. Indium is right here on the periodic table. So it's to the left of the zigzag line. So that is a metal. And it is, um, these are main group. So indium is a main group metal. And this column doesn't have any particular name. Although, um, sometimes these metals are called post-transition metals. Although they appear in the main group, um, they are still metals and they come after the transition metal. So sometimes they're called post-transition metal. All right, let's look for lithium. Lithium is right up here, uh, element number three. It's to the left of the zigzag line, so it's a metal. Uh, it's main group. And the group that it's in is called alkali metals. All right, oxygen. Oxygen's over here, one of those few non-metal elements. So oxygen is non-metal. It's main group. And this column, these are called chalcogens. All right, let's look for the next metal, cadmium. Cadmium is right here. So cadmium, number 48, is a metal. Um, although this is part of the transition block, sometimes this last column here with zinc, cadmium, and mercury, sometimes that last column is considered to be main group. So this one is, uh, will differ depending on different sources. So main group or transition, main slash transition. Cadmium is kind of in a strange place there, right between the transitions in the main group, just like the metalloids are right between the metals and the non-metals, so they're kind of in between. It's kind of like these elements, zinc, cadmium, and mercury. They're kind of, kind of right on the edge of being main group metals, so sometimes they're lumped into that category too. All right, let's find terbium. Terbium is Here it is. Terbium, number 65. So, this is also a lanthanide. It's in the lanthanide row. So these are metals. And it's a lanthanide. And remember, lanthanides and actinides are considered inner transition metals. So this one is also inner transition. All right, and finally, let's look at rhenium. Rhenium is 
right here. So element number 75, metal. Um, it's transition metal. Um, and this group, this column doesn't have any special name, so it's just a transition metal here. All right, go ahead and pause the video here for a minute and give this one a shot. Write a symbol for each of the following neutral isotopes. Include the atomic number and the mass number for each. The calcogen with a mass number of 125. Remember that the mass number goes up above 125, and the calcogens are in uh, the same column as oxygen. Starts with oxygen. So, uh, although it's not the mass number of tellurium here is not 125. It's 120. This is the atomic mass 127.60. But if we were looking for an isotope that had a mass of 125, and it's a calcogen. That one is the closest one because none of the others are even close to 125. And remember that the atomic mass, 127.60, is an average of the masses of each naturally occurring isotope multiplied by their natural abundance. So that mass, uh, atomic mass of 127.6 is not the same as the mass number. Um, we wouldn't expect it to be. So the, they must be referring to tellurium here. So we'll write the symbol for tellurium. And the atomic number of tellurium is 52. So we could use this information to determine how many neutrons are in an atom of tellurium. One twenty five is neutrons plus protons, minus fifty two protons is seventy three neutrons. 73 neutrons. Okay, the halogen whose longest lived isotope is radioactive. So when we're looking at the halogens, we look at this column that starts with fluorine. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine are all the halogens. Um, when we're thinking about isotopes, remember that different elements have different kinds of atoms that uh, have different numbers of neutrons and they weigh a different amount. So most isotopes of elements are radioactive. So if we look at a table of the isotopes of chlorine here, um, we see this column of the table half-life. The half-life tells us um, whether something, whether an uh, how frequently an atom is going to decay. So um, if an atom has a half-life, that implies that it's radioactive. And if it doesn't have a half-life and it says stable, that implies that that isotope is not radioactive. So if we look at all of the different isotopes of chlorine, starting at chlorine 28 and going all the way to chlorine 52, there are only two stable isotopes. Chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 are stable. All the rest of these are radioactive. So most isotopes of most atoms are radioactive. There's only two stable isotopes of chlorine. These would be the longest lived isotopes because if they're stable, that means that their half-life is indefinite. They will, they will never decay. This one, um, chlorine 36, has a really long half-life. This says 3 times 10 to the fifth year, so that's about 30,000 years. So th this atom takes a long time to decay, 30,000 years. But 35 and 37 here being stable will essentially never decay. So the question here, this is kind of a difficult one to answer, um, and they're asking the halogen whose longest lived isotope is radioactive. Well, chlorine its longest lived isotope, 35 or 37 either, are not radioactive, they're stable. So the only one that fits the bill in that case then would be astatine. And um, astatine down here, all of the uh, isotopes of astatine are radioactive, all of them. 
even the longest lived one. So the longest lived um, isotope in astatine is not stable, it's radioactive. So that must be the element that they're talking about here. So um, astatine has uh, an atomic number of 85 and an atomic symbol of AT. And to figure out um, which of its isotopes is the longest lived, we would have to look that up in a table. Isotopes of astatine. The longest lived isotope is 210. Um, and it says that uh, longest lived isotope of astatine, I'm just looking this up at Wikipedia, is 210, and the half life is 8 hours. All right, let's try the next one. The noble gas used in lighting with 10 electrons and 10 neutrons. So let's look at the noble gases. Those are all of these over here. Um, helium, we're probably familiar with that. It's used in balloons, right? Neon, you're probably familiar with that. What is neon for? You've probably heard that, maybe neon colors, right? Or neon lights. So a lot, um, often the lights that you will see, like an open sign, uh, or signs that are in the windows of bars often are called neon signs and they work by illuminating a gas inside of a tube and the tube uh, the gas inside the tube is often neon so um, neon is the noble gas that they're talking about here so let's write this one N E is the symbol the atomic number is 10 and this says this has 10 neutrons. So if it has 10 neutrons and 10 protons, then its mass number is 20. All right, let's do the last one. The, la the lightest alkali metal with three neutrons. So here are the alkali metals. Um, hydrogen is actually not an alkali metal. Hydrogen is a non-metal. It's just kind of uh, has no place on the periodic table that seems appropriate. So it's put over here on top of the alkali metals, even though it has a different color here, right? That's to imply that it's not part of that group. So the lightest alkali metal is this one, lithium. So lithium. Lithium has three protons, and it says, uh, which gives it an atomic number of three. And if it has three protons and three neutrons, then it has a mass number of six.